that of Sunday school. And uh, we started our Sunday school class for adults, uh, Making Sense of Martin Luther. If you still would like a book and to join us, or at least to read along, we invite you to sign up on the I Worship Today. Uh, we will have our next session on Thursday. So uh, we'll be doing f the s adults on Sunday and on Thursday, the same week, and it'll just work wonderfully. Uh, Thursday is we meet at the, in Holy Grounds and begin that process of uh, wor working through this really well done book by uh, David Lose. Uh, also, uh, I Wonder, Godly Play, Pastor Kerry is meeting with our children and helping them to go through the Bible stories and think about scripture. And then Remind Me again is for our youth and they are meeting uh, to do that uh, study as well. And we begin, um, we began today and we will continue the next number of weeks as we do faith formation. Next slide, we have opportunity for uh, you to serve in worship. If you would like to serve in worship, we'd love to have you do that. Please uh, use this QR code or there's a QR code that's stationary out at the desk or if you can't find it or you wanna volunteer, let us know, let Pastor Kerry, myself or Linda know. We really need helpers who will read, who will help with communion, who will be assisting ministers in that part of worship. So if you would, please sign up and let us be aware of that and your willingness to help. The next announcement has to do with a fun opportunity, family night, movie night, and September 20th. If you are interested, there's more information in the bulletin or talk with Pastor Kerry. We need you to sign up as well. And lastly, as we uh, begin uh, Sunday school and all of that, we. We turn towards fall, and our next announcement has to do with the Thanksgiving uh, project, which we do every year, which is uh, to share Thanksgiving meal with our, those who can't worship with us. Uh, and uh, we also have a meal here at church. The, the meeting will be Tuesday, September 24th. Put that in your book, if you will. If you're willing to help cook turkeys or mashed potatoes, whatever, we, we uh, dole out assignments at that meeting and uh, figure out how we're gonna make that happen. It will happen on the Thursday before Thanksgiving. That's our normal day for this uh, opportunity for fellowship, but also an opportunity to do in-reach and meeting and connecting with our shut-ins. So please put that, that date in your calendar. This time I'm gonna invite everyone to stand as we continue with, uh, with the passing of the peace. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Today let's shake hands, okay? What do you think about walking across the aisle and shaking hands with somebody? Let's do that. Let's touch each other, wow, in worship.
in our call to worship based on 146. We want to sing a song of praise to our God for as long as we live. Our help and hope is in God. From God comes every blessing. God is great. When we sing, says something is done. Breaking down prison doors, opening eyes, lifting the lowly, defending the wrong, feeding the hungry, protecting the stranger, caring for widows, and adopting the this is the work of God. We will join in this work. We worship you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us join in our hymn of praise. With you. And with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, throughout the ages you transform sickness into health and death into life. Open us to the power of your presence and make us a people ready to proclaim your promises to the whole world. Through Jesus Christ, our healer and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we hear our readings for today. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 35, beginning with the fourth verse. Say to those who are fearful of heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is God. He will come with vengeance and he will, with terrible recompense, and he will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped and the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness and the streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, 
and thirsty ground springs for water. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from James chap chapter 2. My brothers and sisters, do you act with acts of favoritism really believe in the glorious God, Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold rings and fine clothes comes to your assembly and a poor person in dirty clothes comes in, you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please. Well, the one who is poor, you say, stand over there, sit at my feet. You have made, not made the distinctions among yourselves and have become judges with evil thoughts. Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, God has not chosen the poor of the world. God has chosen the poor of the world to be rich in faith and heirs to the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him. But you have dishonored the poor. Is not the rich who oppose you? Is it not they who drag you into court? Is it not they who blaspheme the excellence name that was invoked over you? If you, you <clears throat> do well, if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scriptures, you shall love your neighbors as yourself. But if you show partiality and commit sin, convicted by the law as transgressors, whoever keeps the whole law but fails at one point becomes accountable for all of it. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food and one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm, eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs. What good is that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Mark's Gospel, the seventh chapter. Jesus set out and went away to a region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know that he was there. And yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed at his feet. Now the woman was of Gentile, Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But he answered him, sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, for saying that you may go and the demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying in, on the bed and the demon was gone. Then he returned to the, from the region of uh, Tyre and went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. And they brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech. And they begged him to lay hand on him, his hand on him. And he took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers in his ears. He spat, on, and, uh, spat and touched his tongue. And then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. 
Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one, but the, one, but the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, he has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Our title for our worship series is up on the screen. A life of faith is everything after you say you believe. Think about that. A life of faith is everything after you say you believe. Faith, by this definition, a life of faith, by this definition, is how we live it out. Not what we hold in our heads. Not what we say we believe. But rather, how we live what we believe. A life of faith reveals to others what your thoughts are. And this is why James is the perfect book to look at Despite Luther's comments about being a book of straw, it's because Luther has a different definition looking for a gospel-like thing. And it's because James is a manual on how to live a life of faith. That's the way James writes its book. James is a textbook on what a life of faith reveals to the world, how you live it out. And so this week we turn to the subject of deeper connections. How do we deepen the connections with everyone in our lives, not just our family, not just our friends, not just our close acquaintances, but how do we live a life of faith that makes the difference in the lives of others who might not know, even know our name, but recognize our face? How do we live a life of faith that makes a difference in the lives of people we might not even know? It was an experience I'll never forget. Forgive me if you've heard this story before, but it was very formative in my life. It was my fourth year at Camp Moana, and I was chosen to be the leader of a wilderness camping experience for a week for about 20 youth. And what we would do is we would make a village in the woods. We would cook all our meals outside. We would live in tents out in the woods. We would even dig our own latrine and basically make our own little village in the woods. Now, being outdoor for long periods of times and living around a fire, no showers, that is, made us all, how do I say this, rather earthy in appearance and smoky in smell. Well, on the fourth day of camp, we were completing a tree fort up high, and we had done all of this by making lashings uh, around the, the, the branches and so forth. No nails, no fasteners, no fancy metal equipment to, to hold it there. And I was in an awkward position, and somehow I cut my thumb very badly with my knife. <clears throat> well, we had first aid materials, and uh, as, as I came down and we began to try and get the blood to stop, it was very evident that I was going to need stitches. So the camp director took me into the hospital around 11 a.m. And I sat in the emergency room for over four hours before they would even come and look at me. Now, I know that's the way emergency rooms can be, having sat there uh, uh, numbers of times with my children in later life and even my mom at times. However, there was no one else there. The place was empty. I mean, you could hear a pin drop. I mean, it was as empty as the Ohio State Library on game day. <laughs> empty. And as I waited... I overheard the staff talking about me, saying, I don't want to deal with that dirty, smelly guy. 
Yeah, I have to admit, I was dirty. I was ripe. I was, it was not a pretty sight. And I heard them trying to pass me off to one another. At one point, I heard them reference me as a bum. It took nearly nine hours to get four stitches in my thumb and get me back to camp. Now, this taught me a very valuable, very enormous life lesson about how we view others, about how we look at the surface or smell the air. Gave me a life lesson about favoritism and prejudice and how we judge people, even people in need, by their appearance. And so today I want to talk to us about growing deeper connections, which, mean, which in turn means talking to you about the problem of favoritism and prejudice. I believe they're kissing cousins of a sort. And so James, in today's second lesson, exhorts us to examine the basis for our partiality. He says, my brothers and sisters, do you, do you with your acts of favoritism really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? Now, if you don't hear the sting in that question, I invite you to listen to it again. And two things are very important about this verse. First is that James wants to address acts of favoritism and prejudice. prejudice. Now, this is not to say that we, we don't have favorite people that we want to spend time with, like our family or our very close friends. You know, I would hope that we would have people in our lives whom we are really, we, we, that we really connect with and do many things with that mean a lot to us. I hope that for all of us. However, what James is talking about here when he talks about favoritism and prejudice is our public life. Our public life. How do we react to either those of greater position or lesser position than ourselves? Is it because our actions of favoritism or prejudice, it's because when we, we act with either of those, favoritism or prejudice, we betray our faith. My dad had a saying, and if you've ever taken a, a, a class with me or spent some time talking about faith with me, you've heard me say it before, and it rings in my ears today, and that is, the ground is level at the foot of the cross. The ground is level at the foot of the cross. Now, what do I mean by that? Everyone, everyone, from the pope to the bishop to the to the president, to whoever, is on equal footing before our Lord, God, Lord Jesus. Every one of us is, is not greater than the other. Every one of us is broken. Every one of us is sinful. Every one of us stands in need of God's grace, which he grants through the personhood of Jesus Christ and his death and resurrection for us. And so the ground... In God's eyes and how he values us, God, the ground is flat at the foot of the cross. And so biblically, the question is, whose values are at work as we serve and as we live life if we call ourselves Christians? It was over dinner that her life began its transformation. A sickly woman named Charlotte was seated next to a great the great English evangelist, Dr. Caesar Mallon. And during the course of that evening meal in West, the West End of London, Charlotte's dinner was interrupted by Mallon's question her about, about her spiritual condition. When she replied that she didn't really want to discuss such a private matter, Dr. Mallon apologized for his offense and explained that he was always eager to speak a word for his Lord. 
weeks later, she couldn't get that conversation out of her head. And so when on another occasion, Dr. Mallon and she met, she raised the whole issue with him. And after a few words of counsel, Dr. Mallon told Charlotte that she would have to come to Christ, quote, just as you are a sinner to the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, unquote. And with that, Charlotte prayed to entrust her life to Christ. But her health continued to deteriorate until, until she was bedridden. One day, her brother, who was a Christian pastor, announced plans to build a school for poor children. Charlotte really wanted to help. She wrote a hymn. So she wrote a hymn, the proceeds of which would go to help establish that school. And as she contemplated her song, the words of Dr. Mallon uh, brought her back to her faith, how he brought her to faith, kept coming back to her in her mind. And so she pinned, penned the words for one of the most beloved hymns of all time and ended up funding more than half of the cost of the entire school. The hymn, Just as I am. Charlotte Elliott, sick and bedridden, would pen one of the most moving hymns of all time because she had been embraced by God's values. The values of the values of our faith look beyond the visible. That's what James is telling us today. That when we judge based on what we see, we deny the very values for which our Savior died. The values of eternity look at the heart and character, not to the impressive fading of values of, of wealth or prestige or, or even to the rags of poor folk. As Charlotte Elliott personally discovered, each one of us comes just as we are, before the throne of Christ to receive that love that meets us only there. And so God sees us. God sees us. He sees more than our circumstances, more than all those categories on our tax returns, more than any other category the world wants to put on us. Each of us will go through seasons of difficulty in this life. It happens. It is part of being human. And our circumstances will change. Not always for the better. Sometimes, but not always. And yet Jesus Christ truly sees us as who we are. And that means that he sees beyond our situation. He sees beyond the smell of fire smoke <laughs> and four days of dirt. He sees beyond Rolex watches and diamond studded rings. He sees us as we are. And that's good news. As Jesus followers, Christians, we are called to see each other and those around us with that same heaven-sent vision. In marked contrast, our world, our world sees one another through, uh, to, as they affirm, monetary and, and the glamorous, right? If we evaluate the values of our time, we will find that the world suffers from the addiction of the to the obvious. Our world celebrates the achievements of the famous, regardless of their selfish life decisions. And then we often ascribe authority to their opinions when, in fact, they have really no authority in many areas except their own notoriety. Then our world scurries to be such near such persons in order to bask in reflective glory, right? To be within their glory. I'm near this very important person. 
Now, please don't misunderstand me. I admire the gifted and successful as much as anyone else. I appreciate the remarkable achievements of great athletes and musicians. But to suggest that they are therefore of greater value in the kingdom than anyone else is absolutely silly. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we are called to deeper connections with God, with others, with ourselves, through these words of James. James invites us to let go of favoritism and prejudice, to be aware of it, to let it go, and to see with the eyes of God in the other a child of God. It's interesting to think about that word prejudice, a word that at its roots means prejudge, to judge before. Prejudice has made a judgment before we get to meet the person who we are prejudging and see who they are at their core. You see, James reminds us of what really matters the eternal value of every person in the heart and the eyes of God is what really matters. And as a follower of Jesus, as people of God, we need to interact with others as God does. We need to develop the, the eyes, if you will, of Jesus to see in each other, to see the uh, child of God, to see maybe Jesus' face in the face of others, to, to see them as they are. And as we've been loved by our God, we, so, so, will we be lo so will we love those who God sends us, whether in seasons of plenty or in want. Will you join me in welcoming all so that we can equip each person with the real faith for their real lives and through the power of the Holy Spirit change the world one life at a time. Together, we can make Peace Lutheran a community of compassion and of service. Together, we will leave this place blessed and enter the world to heal and care and speak the truth in love. Isn't that the church that our Savior envisioned in the first place? Wouldn't you love to be a part of it? I would. Amen. Let us stand as we confess before our loving God. God, we come to worship to give our hearts, to offer ourselves in doing your work in this world. Join us, join us to your intentions and purposes. Point us to the ministries that match our gifts. Lead us into deeper connections with you and one another. Hear our prayers. In all we do, you take the glory. As we use our gifts, you deserve the praise. Unite us as one body in Christ, whose life, death, and resurrection forgives our sin. Bring unity where there is division, so that the deep connections can be restored. Make us a deep faith community where your work is accomplished and the kingdom of God is present. Thank you. We praise you. We worship you. Let us sing.
Holy Spirit, we pray with confidence for the church, God's good creation, and all who are in need. Please be seated. Let us pray. Awaken in our communities of faith a spirit of radical hospitality. Encourage our churches to celebrate and embrace people of diverse backgrounds, experiences, and abilities. Deepen our commitment to ecumen soul and interreligious partnerships. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bring forth water to nourish plants and animals in places suffering from drought. Renew our commitments to protect rivers, lakes, and streams, and make us good stewards of water in our homes and com communities. Preserve wetland habitats and the creatures that make their homes there. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Inspire leaders of cities, nations, and tribes to lead with wisdom and humility. Bring peace among peoples in conflict and strengthen global commitments to nonviolent situations. Guide all who seek refuge from war to a safe haven. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Comfort all who live with chronic illness. Surround them in your tender embrace and sustain all who provide ongoing care and support. Bring hope and healing to people struggling with addiction and nourish the spirits of all who are in recovery. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Nurture in all people the gift of your creating spirit. Inspire artists and musicians, woodworkers and quilters, poets and dancers. Revive those whose artistic wells have run dry and enliven all who doubt their creative talents. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give you thanks for all who have died and now find their rest in you. May their faithful witness guide us in our daily life with you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for our church family and those we name aloud or silently in our hearts that all experience the healing and comfort given through Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to the table for the banquet is now ready. We encourage you to be seated at this time as you gather your I Worship Today sheet as well as your offering. Those will go into our offering plates um, as you come up to take communion. There will be three stations. We encourage you to receive bread or gluten-free wafers at one station where you will dip them before returning to your seats.
May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.